Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning how to make this macrame owl. Tutorials and videos like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. An easy way to help support my channel is to like, share and subscribe. You can also check out my handmade macrame products on my shop at craftedbykerry.com. The final way to support is directly to this channel by becoming a subscribed member to craftedbykerry.com. I've detailed below how much rope you need, some wooden rings and some beads. Step 1, we're going to attach all 8 cords to the wooden ring using a lark's head knot. Find the centre of your cord. Use this to thread through the wooden ring to create your lark's head knot. Thread the loop through the ring from front to back. Pull down the cord at the back and enlarge the loop so that you can pull the front cords all the way through. What we're going to do different here is we're going to trap the short cords against the wooden ring and we're going to do the lark's head knot around it. So you're still pulling through the front cords but do that with the short cords sandwiched in between. The first one's the trickiest, then add all the other rope with a lark's head knot in the same way. When you've finished it should look something like this with the short cords evenly spaced on both sides. If you unravel these, these will become the tufts of the owl. For a really straight tassel, after unravelling, brush, then I would wet and flatten down with your hand so that they will dry in a straight flat position. Step 3, we start making the head using square knots. Split the cords into groups of four. Each square knot is made with four cords. So the first square knot, start with the right cord crossing over to the left. I had a little bit of a knot here that I've just untangled. The right cord crosses over to the left and the left cord, the first cord, sits over the right cord just here. After it sits here, you use the tail end of the cord to tuck underneath both the vertical cords and pull up through the loop on the right. Once you tighten up, that becomes a half square knot. You complete a square knot by doing the same on the opposite side. So you start with the left cord crossing over to the right then the right cord sits on top of the tail end of the left cord just here. Then the same cord tucks under both of the vertical cords and the loop on the left. Tighten up and that's one square knot. Now we're going to repeat another three square knots. Step four, alternating squares. You use the same method to make a square knot but exclude the first two cords and make the square knot using the next four cords. If you tighten up too quickly or too hard, the middle cords might get twisted or bunch up. Just tug down on the middle to remove any slack and this will keep your square knots really neat, especially as you're alternating. Now add another two square knots so that you can complete this row of three square knots. I always tug down on the middle cords of my square knot to remove any slack. Add another two rows of decreasing square knots, two for the next row and one on the last. Step five, double half hitch the V shape around the head. The outer cords become the lead cords for your double half hitch. Starting with the left side, take one cord at a time to wrap over the lead cord. Do this by wrapping over the lead cord, pull back and tighten up all the way. Doing this twice completes this knot as a double half hitch knot. Repeat all the way along and then repeat on the other side.
step six, connect the V-shape. We have a small gap here and we're going to connect this together by doing another double half hitch knot. Pick either side to become your lead cord, doesn't matter which one. Step seven, we create a square knot that will fall just between the eyes of the owl, not using the middle four cords. Step eight, attach the eye wooden rings. The knot we use is a lark's head knot, but it looks a little bit different from the one we did at the beginning. Take the closest cord to the middle beside the square knot and use this to thread through the wooden ring from front to back. Pull through towards the right hand side of the cord, just like this. Then throw your cord over towards the top left, just like this. We're going to come back to this loop here later on. Now thread the cord back through the wooden ring from the back to the front. Don't fully tighten up yet as you'll need this loop. Thread the tail end through this loop that you created earlier. Pull through and tighten up. Tighten up as much as you can. Adjust if you need to. This is a lark's head knot that looks like the first knot that we did. Move the end of the cord down and out of the way underneath the eye. Repeat this for all the remaining cords. Remember when you pull through to pull through towards the right, not to the left. This advice will be the opposite when you're knotting on the right hand side to attach the right eye. Step nine, add bead eyes. Choose the cord to thread through the beads that makes them sit just in the middle of the eye. For me, this was the third cord along. I find just twisting the cord in the direction that it's wrapped helps to thread through the bead. Do this with both eyes and just sit them in the right place. Step 10, frame the body. We do this by doing double half hitch knots underneath both of the eyes. First start with the left, work your way across and then repeat the same on the right hand side. The lead cords are the outer left and right cord of the square knot. Step 11, thread the bead for the nose. Step 12, the body. We do this using alternating squares. Leave the first two cords and make a square knot with the next four. Make another square knot on the right. Your first row has three square knots. Make two more squares on the next row alternating your cords. Step 13, your first set of wings. We do this using a lark's head knot again, as we did 
with attaching the eye. Create a loop to the size of the desired wing. Using the same cord, wrap this under the second cord. Pull up through the loop. Tighten up whilst maintaining the size of the loop that you want for your wing. Keeping that in place, you pull the cord downwards. This vertical cord becomes the loop that you're going to use after you tuck the tail end under and back through. This might take a little bit of getting used to, but it's the same method that we use to attach both of the wooden eyes above. Now you can see this is a lark's head knot. Great, that's one wing, and that's how we're going to make all the other wings for this owl. Step 14, square knot underneath the wing. This will complete your second row of square knots of the body. In total, it will be four square knots in a row. Step 15, add another row of three square knots. Step 16, add another pair of wings. Use the same method as before, using a lark's head knot to attach your wings. Step 17, row 4, 4 square knots. Step 18, row 5, 3 square knots. Keep alternating. Step 19, step 20, finish the body. Add another row of 2 squares and then 1 square to finish off. Step 21, the double half hitch cumulative. We did this last week, I'll add a link for that tutorial. I only had a really small amount of cord left where I'd finished my wings. This might be different for you guys, depending on how big you made your wings, but you add that to your lead cord. You wrap around with the next cord along, just as you would a double half hitch knot. Wrap twice. I always tuck down on my lead cords to remove any slack to keep it nice and neat. When you've finished, add this working cord to the lead cord so now you've got three cords as your lead cord. Use the next cord to wrap over a double half hitch knot as we did before. Then this working cord also adds to your lead cord and you keep adding cumulatively like this as you keep going on to the next cord to double half hitch knot. Keep knotting like this all the way down and then repeat on the right hand side as well.
Step 22, you want to perch your owl on something. You can use a wooden ring, you can use a stick, a piece of driftwood, or you can use a dowel that you just cut to the size that you want. Lift one cord over your stick, then tuck it under and pull through to the left hand side. Sling it over to the right, pull it under and thread it back up through the loop that you've created when you pulled it over to the right. This is the same as we've been doing in all the other uh, parts of this where we attach the wings and the eye. It's using the lark's head knot. Repeat on the left hand side. Secure the feet with a little knot underneath the stick. Remove any slack by tugging down and then just tie a dead knot, a simple knot or a double half hitch. The last step is to cut, brush and style your hour if that's your preference. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you found this tutorial helpful. Leave me a note in the comments of what you thought. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please hit subscribe and follow me on my channel. I hope to see you again. Thanks guys, bye.